the star in the sky? Yes. Have you heard the angels singing? Yes. Did you see the shepherds running to Bethlehem? All looking for that precious promise uh, that they were told would be there. Amen. So let's stand and sing and begin our worship this morning. <laughs> Gracious and holy God, the God that offers us hope and joy and peace and certainly love. We thank you, God, for the ways that you offer these things to us day in, day out, moment by moment. 
Your love never changes. It is not fluid. It does not roll with the times. It sustains us through each and every moment of our lives. And so we thank you, God, for offering that to us always. May we open our ears and our hearts to you in this service today. And God, as we prepare to, to hear from you and an encounter from you, we lift up those that, that may be heavy on our hearts today, those that are suffering from illness. We certainly lift up those in our, in our own community that we've heard of lately in, in our community, in our churches, in our lives. God, those friends, those family members that we have lost, those that are suffering, those that are having to be alone during this time, we lift them up to you, God. And we just pray that as they all walk through their journeys, that you offer them, that they grab on to the hope and the joy and the love and the peace that you offer. God, we thank you for all of those that come today to worship, either in person or online. And we thank you for not just their presence, but overwhelmingly your presence today, gracious God. We join together in this time of worship, and we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Important things because 
what better year to truly just go back to the manger. And so I hope during this Advent you've been able to just truly spend time looking into the face of the Savior. That's been the, the goal all along. Um, today as we hear about these people from the, the Gospel of Luke, I want you to try to put yourself in this position, in their position. And so I want you to think of the, the, the scenario first that kind of kind of talk, talks to my heart about going and, and telling people this story. Do you remember where you were on 9-11? When that fateful day happened, do you remember where you were? Because if you ask anybody, they can probably almost tell you where they were standing, sitting, driving. Everyone knows that is just burned into their mind. I was working at the school in Bonham doing accounts payable and receivable for their food service. And I literally remember walking up to the front office and there was a TV in the front office and I could not see what was on the screen, but I saw the secretary and she was just gawking, just staring at it. And I made some off the wall joke about uh, who's on the prices right today or, or something like that. And as she turned to look at me, her face was just tear stained. And she said, we're under attack, we're under attack. And I will never forget in that moment, the feeling I had. So I want you to put yourself in the position today of the shepherds. This story that was burned into their mind and never changed. For 2,000 years, people have remembered and talked about this story. So here now from the Gospel of Luke. That night, some shepherds were in the fields nearby watching their sheep. An angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them, and suddenly they became very frightened. The angel said to them, don't be afraid because I'm bringing you some good news. It will be a joy to all people. Today your Savior was born in David's town. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a feeding box. Then a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel. All the angels were praising God, saying, Give glory to God in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace to the people who please God. Then the angels left the shepherds and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. We will see about this thing the Lord has told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph. And the shepherds saw the baby lying in a feeding box. Then they told what the angels had said about this child. Everyone was amazed when they heard what the shepherds said to them. Mary hid these things in her heart. She continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking him for everything that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, as we have lifted praises to your name, bowed before you in prayer, and read your holy scripture, we know and feel your presence here today. So gracious God, may we place ourselves in the position of the shepherds today as we hear their story about Christ the Lord. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. So in Luke, we learn that Jesus was born in Bethlehem um, and that there were these shepherds in this field in Bethlehem who were doing their job. Um, we also know that as they watched over their flock, that shepherds were some of the, the least respected people in the world. They had a dirty job. Usually they um, did not choose this job. They didn't have anything else to do. And so it was either the family business of running and, and taking care of the sheep or they were criminals and that's the only other thing they could do. It was not a well-respected position. They were very lonely people. It was a dangerous job at times um, in caring for their shepherds. They had to fight off uh, any, any prey or any animals that would come against their sheep. Um, and so they were an unpopular group of people. But this is who God chose to tell first about the birth of his son. Luke tells us it was at night time, and so they were in a place away from town, is where the shepherds stayed, and so it was very dark. But obviously the sky was clear, so they could see the angels, and they could see the star. And so it had to be a, a clear night. Um, that setting had to be very synonymous for what we see today, that we might reside in this place of darkness, but that God will still come to us. 
So God dispatches these angels to this region of the world. First is one lone angel. One lone angel to spread the news. And then as they tell the shepherds, it says many angels. It doesn't tell us how many, but can you just imagine one? One coming and saying this. But then this group of angels that begins to gather together to tell the shepherds of the news of Christ's birth. We remember this story. Just like I asked you about 9-11, now can you step a little more and remember where you were and who it was that told you about Jesus Christ? Can you remember the person that told you about this Savior that would save your soul? This Savior that would offer hope and faith and joy and peace and love? Can you remember that person? That's what these shepherds were that day. The night sky drew in these shepherds to go spread the news. But first, they had to verify the story, right? Don't we as humans all need affirmation? We all need affirmation that maybe what God's telling us is true, right? Because they, they couldn't just believe it on their own. But you think about it. These angels came to them and they say, let us go to see if this thing has happened. Or some, some translations say to see this thing that has happened. One translation says, let's go confirm this. So they needed affirmation of this announcement of joy and hope that came out of thin air, right? And so they go to the manger. They find the babe laying there, just as it said in the feeding trough. I want you to think about this. Later in the scripture, it says that Jesus is the bread of life. Isn't it just fitting that the bread of life would lay in a feeding trough? The bread of life that would feed us our entire life with all of these things that Advent offers. These are not just words that we have pulled out of the, of the thin air to say, oh yeah, this is, this is what the Christ child offers. Hope and joy and peace and love. We are reminded of that each and every Advent. The bread of life was born on that night. And so the angels go to confirm this. And they get there and they see him lying in the manger, wrapped in cloths. And they rejoice. They realize that it truly has happened. There's a professor from a seminary, a Lutheran seminary, that talks about God's coming to us. And he says, we all realize at some point in our life that we need God. Now that kind of pulls the, pulls the message away from grace that God just falls on us and that we really do need him. It's just at what point in our life do we realize we need God. And when we realize we need God, we run around like chickens with our heads cut off sometimes trying to affirm that. There are people that know they need God, but instead of saying, I need God because God is going to fill my life, they say, I need God because I need other things. I need God to provide this for me. I need God to provide that. I need God to provide me a home. I need God to provide me a car. I need God to provide me a job. No, if you cling to God and realize you just need God, all those other things are taken care of. That's where we realize our need. These shepherds knew that night. They needed whatever it was the angels were telling them. And they responded to that need. They went to affirm it blindly. Yo, that's, that's the greatest act of faith I've ever seen. They left their position. Yo, this was their position to care for these animals. Nowhere in scripture can I find that it says they took the sheep with them. They left their post. They could have lost their jobs. Probably, I have to think, in their lowly position, they could have been killed. They could have been stoned for leaving their position. That was a farmer's herd that could have been killed by any prey hiding in the mountains or hiding in the shrubs or whatever they hid in. They could have immediately swooped in and killed the whole herd of sheep. But these shepherds faithfully and blindly left their post to go see this thing that had happened. And when they get there, they tell all that had happened. Now, can you imagine in that stable when those shepherds walked in, these lowly shepherds, these probable, probably criminals, these folks that walked in, and as they walk in dirty and smelly and, and of all people, that they come bringing affirmation to Mary of what she already knew. 
This whole night was about affirmation. This whole story is about affirmation. Can you imagine the goosebumps? I got goosebumps just reading the scripture. I almost stopped and said, ooh, that's good stuff. Can you imagine the goosebumps they got when those angels said, unto you this day your Savior is born, and he is Christ the Lord. That's the Christmas message. That's the good news right there. And they run to the manger and they tell them, letting them know, letting us know this day that this lowliest of people that ran to share about Jesus' coming, that God's grace is not good enough. No, not too good for anybody. It is good enough for all of us, for every person in this world. The Christmas story tells us that the gospel reaches everyone. And I'm going to tell you that in most Christmas plays, in most stories, children, even adults, want to be Mary. Everybody wants to be Mary. I want to be a shepherd. I want to be a shepherd that goes and tells the good news to people. That gets to run to people and say, do you know Jesus Christ? I want to be that person. Sometimes we fall short of that. And sometimes we all need affirmation. And so I, I will just be the first to tell you that I'm one of those people that really, really needs affirmation. Very rarely do I run blindly into anything. But when I do, when I do and I faithfully run in blind, God's always there to let me know he's with me. He's always there to let me know he's orchestrating this. And so a few weeks ago, um, a few weeks ago, I told y'all about um, a boy that had started sending us messages um, on Facebook. His grandmother was dying. She has since passed and gone to glory. Um, he really didn't know what his situation was going to be. He ended up finding family he didn't even know he had in another state. But when I first got his message, the first thing he said to me was, he called me a TV preacher. And I said, please don't ever call me a TV preacher again, because I don't want to be called a TV preacher, because you just have this bad concept in your mind when you hear a TV preacher. Um, I won't say any names, but they just, so many come to your brain. So the other day, I'm in Waco, and I had been in the nail salon, and there had been, had been this beautiful woman in there. I mean, she was just absolutely beautiful. And she caught my eye several times. And every time she caught my eye, she was looking at me. And so uh, as, I, as I got out to the car and everything, Taylor came in and we switched position with the kids. So Taylor could go in the nail studio. And we got a cup of coffee and all that. And I came back. And as I came back, the woman was walking out. And she walked over to the car. And at first, the first thing I did was reach over and make sure the door. Because I was like, why is she walking over to the car? I have these children in the car. And she walks over, but immediately my hand reaches over and I just roll over the town. It wasn't a fear as she got to the car or anything like that. And she said, are you that preacher that I see on TV? <laughs> I said, no. Maybe I'm the one you see on Facebook. Maybe I'm the one you see on the internet. But I'm not the one I'm done, not on TV. Uh, and then, let me just say, there's some very well-respected pastors I see on TV. Let me say that. They're not, they're not all there. Um, and I, so I said who I was, and she said, I've watched you. I've watched you. A friend of mine has shared your sermon several times, and I've watched you. And I just wanted to know if you would pray with me. I've been having a really, really rough time. Now, I want to back up for just a second, because you have to know a few ways that God affirmed this to me. First was the whole TV preacher thing, because I've made such a joke about that. The second thing is, is that when my kids were young and I was brand new single mom out of an abusive marriage, and um, the very first Christmas I talked about a few weeks ago, I just scrimped and scrimped and scrimped and scrimped. There were a couple of Christmases later down the line where as the kids got older and they were in sports and I always made sure Tyler could play his silly ball and Taylor do whatever her cheerleading and, and all that they were trying to be involved in. And so one year I said to them, I sat them down, they were a little older and I sat them down and I said, guys, I'm not going to have the money this year to do a big Christmas. So I can get you one good gift or I can get you just a few little things that you might need and we'll have us a January Christmas. Because in January everything goes on sale. And so I'll have that money that won't have to be coming out of this check. And so we can have ourselves a really good January Christmas. And I'll just say, my kids were so good, both of them. Mom, we don't need anything. We really don't need anything. Um, 
And, and I said, no, let's, let's just have us a January Christmas. So I'm sitting in my car the other day. This woman walks up. We talked for a minute. She wants to be afraid. Tells me she's had a rough time. And she said, I'm not asking for anything. I just really, really need prayer. And I said, okay. So we prayed blindly, no clue what I'm praying for. And I'm just praying with her, praying with her, praying with her. And so as we finish, I said, can I ask you if you need anything? I mean, like, can I give you anything? Can I do anything for you? Is there anything? She said, no. She said, I have, I have kids, and we are just trying to make it through the holidays. She said, we've decided we're going to have a January Christmas. <laughs> okay. I said, let me ask you a question. Do you need any money? I had literally, literally carried in my pocket, not in my pocket, in my purse, $500. And I knew that with $500, I could go get the things I wanted to get for all the older kids, Taylor and Tyler and their, their spouses and Brandon and, and Celeste. I knew I could go get for all of them with that, just little tokens for them. And so in my mind, when I ask her if, I can, if she needs any money, I'm thinking, I could give her $100 for herself, $100 for bills, and if she has a couple of kids, I can give her $100. That'll cover it. I said, how many kids do you have? And she said, three. And I'm thinking, $500, God, two for her, two for the kids. So I reach over to my purse, and I pull it out, and I give it to her. She just sobs and falls to the floor. And so I tell the kids, I'll be right back, and I open the door, and I go to get out, and I kneel on the ground with her, and I'm just holding her and crying with her. And she looks up and she says, my mom and my husband both died from COVID last month. Both. And we have struggled and struggled, not just financially. Folks stepped up and helped pay for the funerals. It wasn't that. I've just struggled in my heart of do I even have Christmas? How can I tell my kids to be so excited about opening gifts this day, but crying about their daddy and their grandmother? And so we talked and we prayed and um, they're going to do a Christmas celebration, but they're going to do it to honor their dad and their grandmother. And the kids are a little bit older and so they've understood what's going on. But she just cried and cried and cried and said, you just have no idea how much I needed to see you today. And I said, I think I, think I might have needed to see you too. I said, I want to pray for your kids by name. Can you tell me what their names are? Two girls, Taylor and Brooklyn. <laughs> And a boy, Brandon. All my kids' names. All my kids' names. And I thought, if I ever needed to be slapped in the face for questioning God again, it was that day. It was that day that God said, quit looking for a reason not to be a shepherd. Quit looking for a reason not to touch my people. Just go and spread the good news that Jesus Christ, your Savior, is there for you. The bread of life. Waiting, waiting for us to run out and tell the world. The scripture says the shepherds went back running and praising and singing to God. Let me tell you, I drove home that day with a little more pep in my step. A little more pep that God is still here. God is still moving and still offering that love to his children every single day. It might be through a homeless person. It might be through a person in grief. It might be through a drug addict. It might be through an unwed mother with a little bitty baby. That's who he used then. So he still uses them today. So however God tells you to move in this season and beyond, don't question it. Just move. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you so much for the ways that you are moving within this world for the ways that you're moving within our own hearts and within our community. We open up to you, God, and we ask you whichever way you would lead us that we would follow. God, that we would run to the mountains and shout the good news of Jesus Christ, that we would go and be shepherds to all, that we will leave whatever we're doing and step away to shout the news that the angels shouted that night in multitudes that a Savior was born. And it is Christ our Lord. God, may that those words forever give us goosebumps. May we be moved to dance with joy at all that you offer. We thank you for this in this day and beyond. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.
I remind you of our second giving. Somebody said, reminded me last week that I didn't tell y'all where we were total wise. And so the manger is down there. If you want to put something in for our second giving, we again have our, our uh, a different donator this year than in previous years that stepped forward and said, we know it's it's been a hard year, but we still want to offer everything that we have to God. And so whatever we take in up until the last Sunday of December in a second giving, um, they will match up to $10,000. And so we also have an online giver who has said they would match up to $5,000 for an online giving. And so we are roughly at about $6,000 is where we are right now. And so um, if you want to place anything in there during the last song, you're welcome to mail it in, pay online, however you wish to do that. Um, so I just wanted to let y'all know where we are since I failed to do that last week. Let's join in our last hymn. And may we all be shepherds. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is born. Go be a shepherd. Go in peace. Love you.